by the routines from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fusov, and this is my channel, Viktor Fusov, entomologist, beekeeper, teacher. And today, September 21st, 2018, and I am standing here in the center of Kyiv, in the downtown. In actually, this is Independent Square. This is a column with the uh, mother Ukraine with the Hotel Ukraine and this is Independence Square or Maidan of Independence the most uh, famous part in the city of Kyiv and by the way today this uh, this video is devoted to special question the names of different zoological subjects the names in entomology and how these names can be so interesting, unusual, surprising and entertaining and even glorious so they glorify you or someone else or maybe another people because entomologists and zoologists especially taxonomists they are dealing always with different zoological names we, as we say this is taxonomy everyone uh, should be named a, any organism any insect should be named so that's why taxonomists making creating names for their subjects especially when taxonomists describing them so how to become how to become glorious how to become famous in taxonomy or maybe not in taxonomy how to receive your name in the name of zoological object this is the subject of this video so for, as you know the first taxonomist and zoologist who just gave binomial names in zoology this was a Linnaeus and Linnaeus he proposed two names for genus and for species and then the name of author who created it so this is the tradition now all taxonomists and zoologists by creating new names so by giving names to genus to genera to species to many species and then we, this species will receive the name of author and the year when it was described for instance the first name as you know just the name of apis mellifera the honeybee and the honeybee is a very famous bee because it's collected honey and it's also described been described by Linnaeus in 1758 well the honeybee received special name like a surname and the name and then all another taxonomists and another entomology by creating new and new names for instance some of them they can create names for the memory of different political leaders but it's not uh, very polite because leaders were always changing and this is always changeable politics everywhere in the world in states in ukraine in russia in uh, any way in europe or in the whole world but nevertheless for instance some of them by making such controversial names for instance some american taxonomists they gave these names in honor of a bushy you see i Aratidium Bushy in the name of a former president Bush or this name Cheney or this is Rumsfeldy yeah these people who are just politicians they were politicians in the United States of America and this was published in 2005 by this Wheeler and Kelly Miller so some of them were given names for politicians so for example uh, now we can also give these names for example at least here on this paper uh, they are not still published but many taxonomists and many entomologists creating new names by discovering these insects so for example it can be more for Bushy or more for Clintony or maybe more for Obama or more for even more for Trumpy because this is a new president why not why not giving a new name in the honor of American president? Yes, this is very honorable, despite their changing. But the name of the president and the name of a person who described it will be always put, uh, written somewhere in the literature. This is called zoological taxonomical literature. And by the way, this name will be forever till the time when this, uh, this name can be re uh, rearranged or for example synonymized will uh, be receiving another name for example because sometimes names can be changeable and changed or what you can, uh, can I say about Ukraine in Ukraine we have also a lot of different very famous people for instance do you know Horodetsky a famous architect or do you know the writer Bulhakov so for example some people if we are just creative, we can describe such a genus as a Vasik, or for example, 
Uh, species name will be Gororodetsky and species name species new. So it should be described as a species new for science. Or for example, the genus Telesic. Telesic, this is the famous hero for in the folklore in Ukrainian folklore and the species name as Bulhakovay, the name of a famous uh, Ukrainian Russian writer. So Ivasi Gororodetsky and Telesic Bulhakovay, why not? Why not? So, but always I can. You can switch on some creativity because many taxonomists were given name very simple like uh, Musca domestica. You know this is Musca domestica uh, domestica uh, name and my Musca genus name. Oh, but we have uh, some very famous people here in Ukraine. Some of them were heroes of different novels. For example, Muska can be Muska Ostapi, because famous person Ostap Bander. Not Bandera, but Ostap Bander is a famous person of Ilf Elmpetrov novel. Or Muska Ilfi, or Muska Ilf Petrovi, for example. Some taxonomists, we can do it, why not? Or Muska Panikovsky. Oh yes, I will come to the sculpture of Panikovsky standing here in, at Prorezna Square and we'll, we'll see how he looks like. Oh, what, what about in other names? In other names can be devoted to some historical person. For, for instance, as you say, no, we can create the genus name and you can create a species name. For instance, uh, if, but if initially we check if this name have not been described by someone else, so you can create genus name and then species name. For instance, the genus name can be Taras and the gene and species name Shevchenko. Yes, uh, but maybe someone has described already Taras, so that's why it can be Tarasiella or something like that. Or what about Grushevsky? It can be species Mikhail Grushevsky, new species of a fly or a dragonfly or beetle or bees. Or for instance, Ivan Frankoy, this is the same also with genus name, genus name and a species name. Or just Lesia Ukrainka, genus name and a species name. Yes? Okay, what's, what's a genus name is the most difficult to, to get it. But Oh, I can uh, propose in other names, but for that, for that, to find these names, very easy, but it's difficult to find the individual, the specimens we would be described for that. Entomologists and zoologists might go somewhere, uh, for instance, abroad, to expedition, to visit in forests, steppe region, mountains, uh, to collect materials somewhere with a sweeping net, with all the entomological and zoological equipment. And after collection, after expedition, I come in back to the laboratory, to the museum, where I can sit in and, and watching the material on my microscope and describing it and publishing it just on computer and then submitting it to the literature and printing it. And after that, this name will be just directly contributed to the scientific literature forever. Forever, don't forget about it. Forever. And for instance, if you propose your name, your name can be also uh, contributed to the scientific literature and the whole and universal world and knowledge forever. Don't forget about it. Even if your name can be synonymized by someone else. For instance, for instance, what you can use some traditional names. For instance, if you collected or entomologists collected uh, such species as a fly Muska somewhere in Zanzibar, somewhere in Africa, Muska can be Muska Trizubi, yes, for instance, or Muska Bulavo, Bulavi or Muska Vishivankoi, or Muska Ukrainica, Muska Ukrainica. But this is a good in contribution to the names which will be glorious for a whole world because people all in other countries will read it and will say the name which were coming from Ukraine. But for that, if you are sponsor, you can contribute to the science, to the zoological and entomological science. And entomologists can type it this name in his or her entomological uh, publication in your ma manuscript. For instance, uh, if uh, there is a name as a morpho, Hercules described Dalman in 1823, but if you or someone or just some of my colleagues can collect morpho somewhere in America, it can be morpho Shevchenko or even morpho Kobzari or it can be morpho Banduri. So these Ukrainian names can be really contributed to zoological science. But these names can be even from your country, from your traditions, from your 
uh, personal memory, so welcome to contribute it. For instance, if I use the names of Ukrainian hetmans, very famous uh, Ukrainian military leaders, so I propose to, con uh, to create such names like Apollo Bogdani in, the, in honor of Bogdan Khmelnytsky or Apollo Khmelnytsky, why not? So a very nice and famous name or Apollo Vishnevetsky, also a very famous Ukrainian hetman or Apollo Polobotki or Apollo Mazepi, why not? But for that, first of all, we need to collect Apollo somewhere in Asia, in mountains and it's not easy. This is uh, really the efforts of entomologist how to collect this animal and then this entomologist can describe it and what's about for instance you, you say about different flies even just the fly like a muska can be named with the name which you do like like the muska circoi why not or muska nestori in the name of nestor machnoi or just the nest apollo machnoi why not or for instance um, Apollo or just Apollo Mikluho Maklai, why not? Very interesting. Or Apollo Sagaidachny. Apollo Sagaidachny, very interesting, very nice Ukrainian name. This is the same, for instance, if someone from mass media or some, not a scientist, but not their relatives, but some of the singers, musicians, they do like to put their name in the name of entomological or zoological subjects. For example, for instance, if you say, Another name, yes, Muska. This is a genus name and a species name can be Muska ruslane or Muska rotare or Muska potapi or even a, a Muska biloziri. Why not? Or Muska danilkoi. But for that, this is a great trick. Yes, continuation. Continuation, as I said, these are names of some musicians or singers. So their names can be also contributed, accepted as the names of some zoological and entomological subjects, like uh, Muska Potapi, why not, or Muska Biloziri, or Muska Danilkoi. Yes, this name can be written in zoological and entomological literature, and it can be contributed in the whole world for world entomological and zoological literature so this is like discovering your planet so if you like it so you can propose your name and some entomologists can describe it but of course if you make an income some kind of a contribution or donation for entomologists that some entomologists can describe the name of some entomological zoological subject in honor for you for because of you made a contribution as a sponsor for instance, such names like Apollo Shevchenko, as I said, quite interesting, or Apollo Shevy, why not? Or Apollo Vakarshuki, so the name of a genus maybe already existed, but the surname, a species name, can be written in the entomological literature, and it will be like discovery of a new planet. Or Apollo Skripki, why not? This sounds pretty nice. Uh, what about in other names? Okay, okay, we can use these names, for instance, from Ukrainian history, how it looks like, or from history or your personal name. Because you can be Mikhailo, you can be Volodymyr, you can be Olga, so the name of the Kulix, just a fly, just a mosquito fly. So Kulix can be Kulix Yaroslavy in the honor of Yaroslav the Wise, or Kulix Volodymyr, or Kulix Mik Mikhaili, or Kulix Alge. Or colleagues, Sophia. Your name is Sophia. Maybe this name can be contributed in honor of you, and it can be written also in precisely in entomological uh, literature and publication. Oh, what's about surname, family names, Ukrainian family names, which can be also contributed for zoological entomological literature. You see, I put here some surnames of Ukrainian people, and they can be used for names of new entomological and zoological subjects, if you do like. Maybe your surname can be here. Actually, I'm speaking in uh, English just for worldwide, so if you do speak English, if you can hear, if you can understand me, and if you are Russian and Ukrainian, you do understand what I'm talking about. Maybe I will talk with the copy of this video.
in uh, Russian or in Ukrainian next time, but this will, uh, will can be useful for people who just immigrated, for instance, somewhere to Brazil, to Amazonia, to Africa, to Australia, New Zealand, uh, North America, uh, South America, and everywhere else, but do like to put your name somewhere in the name of a new species for science. For instance, Ivasik, which as I said, the new genus, new genus of an insect, Ivasik Lysenkoi can be, or Ivasik Bondarenkoi can be. This is a new proposed name. Like if you're Bondarenkoi, so this can be the surname of a new species for science. Or Ivasik Vasilenkoi, or Ivasik Kovalenkoi, or Ivasik Nechipurenkoi. Yeah, sounds pretty nice, sounds pretty Or if you propose your name, your surname, it can be also contributed here to the name of this scientific subject, which can be described somewhere in entomological and zoological literature in English language, by the way, because it's the major, uh, major special and very special contribution, especially in English, must be printed now. So that's why don't worry what I'm speaking in English. The name can be described in English, the description of a species can be in English, but the name of it, this individual, of this entomological, zoological subject can be in Latin language. This is genus name, species name, and then will be the name of entomologist. And if you want to be sponsor, if you want to be contr contributor to the science, you can contribute to worldwide entomological and zoological science. So I'm just working in Institute of Zoology, that's why I'm talking about zoological subjects. And these subjects can be described from worldwide, from any place of the world, still now till the nature, mother the nature is full of new species of insects, bugs, uh, dragonflies, uh, different parasites, parasitoids, uh, different on, uh, dragonflies, as I said, and many and, uh, uh, different species, mosquitoes, yeah, everyone, everyone uh, entomologist who are taxonomist can help you to put your name in the memory forever. So if you like this idea, just propose your name. What name do you like to be contributed to entomological science? How do entomologists can describe it? And this is, will be discovery of your name as a planet on the sky. And of course, your contribution will be very much useful. And by the way, I put this video also on my Patreon and add on my contribution and donation website. So all your free contributions can be uh, also pretty helpful to develop the idea of taxonomy and description of new species in entomology. So thank you for watching. Sorry for a long list of different names in Latin. Sorry for people who do not understand English, but this uh, special video is devoted for people who speak English worldwide. And I'm very pleased that my channel is just heard and uh, people can listen to me and my, my stories worldwide in 55 countries or 60 countries worldwide. And I can see it in uh, YouTube statistics in a special place in my YouTube channel. So welcome to my channel and welcome to entomological science, to zoology. Welcome to my contribution to zoological names like that. If you have questions, write your questions, ask your questions, write it in comments. So press likes, write, write comments and ask about your names. So your name can be also here. If you can be sponsor, you're really welcome. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel, press likes and write your comments and press on a bell so you will receive uh, new stories just directly to your email from YouTube. And thank you for watching. This was a Victor Fursov, Entomology Beekeeper Teacher. And watch my channel, Dr. Victor Fursov, Entomology Beekeeper Teacher. And best greetings from the downtown of city of Kiev, from Independence Square, from the mother Ukraine, which is our well, girl Ukraine, who is standing on the top of this column in the center of Kiev and just sending you best greetings from Kiev. Good luck and see you soon on my channel. Bye bye.